Short wave. Take it down, quick. What's it say? <laughs> ah, shut up. What's that mean? <laughs> you too? Oh, hey. Well, <clears throat> just testing out the uh, CS6 BKW antenna that I just built. And uh, it seems to be working out pretty well. Uh, Got a radio and a tuner and a cross uh, cross needle uh, SWR power meter at uh, my end speaker that my uh, Elmer um, Lucas, uh, who is a ZS6LH Zulu Sierra 6 Lima Hotel, and he's uh, loaned me some equipment so I can be on the air for the rest of my time here in South Africa. Um, you've already seen the uh, tower videos. You've seen uh, scattered around shots of the um, antenna build, but now we're going to have just the antenna build. I'm doing a compilation of uh, several other clips uh, to let you follow the process pretty much non-stop, and I'm going to hit every step in the process, but not spend a whole lot of time. That being said, <clears throat> this video is going to be well over 30 minutes long, so get yourself a cup of coffee or your favorite cold beverage, throw some popcorn in a bowl, and um, sit back and relax and enjoy. Uh, this antenna build has been extremely satisfying and gratifying and uh, <clears throat> for the first time for me to actually do anything of this sort, um, I feel like I've really accomplished something. Um, it's unbelievable uh, just how great it makes you feel that you can actually pull something like this off. Uh, right now I've got the windows closed just so, so you don't have a whole lot of glare, but <clears throat> normally I have this curtain open so that uh, I can look at the antenna, <laughs> which I still can't get tired of looking at. But anyway, <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed the uh, video segments that I put up, you know, in the different episodes. Uh, this is <clears throat> just the antenna build. I will include a link to uh, dipole, uh, not dipole, but um, <clears throat> ladder line calculations, and also the link to the video uh, that got me started on this. Um, the title of the video is Say Goodbye to that G5RB and uh, say hello, to, I think it's something like say hello to the um, ZS6 BKW. Uh, that's what got me started. This is a true multi-band dipole antenna. I'm running mine as an inverted V. Uh, so far I've been all over uh, South Africa. I have a DX into Mozambique a couple of days ago and I've been hearing Italy, um, I think I've got uh, France, uh, I've heard some stations in Oregon uh, from you know, over on the west coast on 40 meters. Uh, wasn't able to break through, but uh, that was the day I got my DX into Mozambique. Uh, anyway, I'm going to stop chatting because this video is already going to be long enough. Hope you enjoy. Uh, this is Kilo 1, November Kilo X-Ray. Hope you're having a great day and enjoy your lockdown. If you got the materials, build yourself an antenna and put it up. Enjoy the show. Later. Hey, K1 K N K1 and KX here. Kilo 1, November Kilo X-ray. Yes, it smells kings. I have to cut about 40 of these little things. These are spacers for ladder line that I'm going to make myself since store-bought ladder line is uh, not available here in South Africa, or at least where I'm at. So we have to make our own. Um, according to the research I've done, I can use 12 gauge wire, which is uh, a little over 2 millimeters, which I've got uh, 2.5 millimeter wire, which actually works out just fine because 12 gauge wires at an inch and three quarter spacing, this is these are 2 inches, at an inch and three quarter spacing is right in between uh, 390 something and 480 or 460, so 2.5 millimeter an inch and three quarters apart should get me right right near 450 ohms impedance for my ladder line. This is going to be the matching system for the um, ZS6 BKW dipole antenna which I'm actually going to run with an inverted V and I showed you out there in the yard where the uh, tower is going to go and 
the tower is actually laying in three pieces in the uh, courtyard right now. We have to get that going. Anyway, I'm going to uh, cut a few of these pipes and uh, let you follow along. Be right back in a minute. Alrighty, I almost forgot you. Last one. I have found that these things have a faint line. It's not a seam, it's just a line going down the length of these. So I've got a big way to get lined up a little bit better. And of course after uh, after doing about almost 40 of these, you start to figure a few things out. Let's see, that one had to get angled over, so here's my line. Let's see if I can... Uh, Oh, goes over there. There we are. Get on the edge. And just like that. Now I can just pull up the chair and start uh, notching these out. Be right back. I'm back. See, I told you. All right. So the next little trick is to try to film when there are no animals or children around, which in this place just didn't gonna happen. So uh, yeah, I'll be back when the uh, circus is done. Right, here we go with the last few. Actually, one, two, three, four. We got four more to go, and uh, we'll just go ahead and run it out. Again, we're about 30 centimeters apart, and again, the spacing between the spacers isn't as critical as the spacing between the conductors. And that's where I was trying to be careful with my measurements. Kind of got a rhythm going now. The main thing here is to keep the conductors running as straight as possible. And again, we're not making a rocket here. And there's no real danger of it becoming a rocket. So we just want to get as close as possible. And uh, we'll see how it works out. Okay, let me get you there. That's spacing pull that through put you back in the notches okay. so before we give that last final tug on the zip tie I have a chance to get the wire in the street there we are moving up to the next one get the wires a little pull to straighten them out going to the 90 here. We just did 60, now we'll do 90. Let's get that snapped in. Sometimes the notches are a really nice snug fit, which is convenient. Unless I gotta try to pull the wire straight. There we go. This, by the way, in case you forgot, is for the ZS6 BKW dipole antenna, multiband, a true multiband. And this ladder line is part of the matching system, or matching section, if you will. Down to 20. I found a few of these that I didn't get all the notches cut. But you know, imagine that. Me missing a few steps along the way. But we got enough to finish this job. The next step, well, uh, I've got to uh, go to the kitchen supply store. And uh, I'm going to get a nice um, poly cutting board. Kind of like the ones you can find at Sam's Club or BJ's or whatever. Oops, we're a little bit short of the mark here. Let's get you down. 
Again, this is not that critical. This is the critical part. Now let's get you pulled in. There we go. Now we'll pull straight. So yeah, Sam's Club, BJ's, Costco's. They'll have those nice big, uh, and that was the last one in the frame. They'll have those nice big poly cutting boards. It, uh, they're cheap, and you can cut them into pieces and make really nice insulators. And in this case, they will become, uh, I'll cut one down, and uh, it will become the uh, center insulator or feed point connector, if you will. And the other end for the um, connection to the coax, which will have the... Uh, RF choke loop on it. Okay. Last one, you get a look, and some of you might ask, isn't this kind of tedious? And yes, it is, but uh, if you're a DIYer, if you're interested in doing homebrew antennas, and in this case, a feed line or ladder line, I mean, it's not that complicated. Tedious, yes. Complicated, no. And uh, there's plenty of calculators out there on the internet that uh, will tell you what your spacing needs to be for whatever uh, impedance you want. And uh, you can take it from there. And I chose 450 because the video that I saw, which when I finish my antenna build, I'll have the entire build as one video. And uh, I will be, uh, uh, I'll be including the link for the video that got me turned on to this antenna. Uh, and also I'll try to remember to uh, post a link for the calculators for to make your own ladder line. Um, again, a really simple process. It took me, I don't know, what time did I start? Yeah, it's 1 o'clock, 10, 12.50 now. Uh, probably been an hour, hour and a half. That included, you know, measuring out 40 feet of uh, this and uh, measuring out 42 around the 40 bringing it in here and setting up and you know if you're into that sort of thing it's actually quite satisfying and it'll be even more satisfying after we get everything hooked up and uh, see where the resonance is because the nice thing about the Z6 BKW is it is supposed to be resonant on five uh, HF bands uh, 40 20 uh, 17, 15, not 15, on uh, the top half of 10 without a tuner. It'll be less than uh, 2 to 1, in most cases right around 1.5 to uh, 1 SWR. And with a tuner, you can get all of 10, 6, and maybe even work in 80 if I recall correctly. So, you know, it's a, if you wanted one antenna, this is probably the one to go with. Anyway, that's it for now. That's the feed line. That's the ladder line. And um, we're going to sign off for now. I'm going to wrap this up and at some point measure out the uh, legs for the antenna. And just like I did with this, cut it long so I can cut it because it's a lot easier to just cut some off. As most of you know, as we say in carpentry, you can always cut more off, but you can hardly ever cut more on. Anyway, that's it. I'm going to close up for now. Uh, kilo 1, November, Kilo X-Ray. We're clear. Later on, friends. And let's see if we're actually in frame here. All right. Hey, welcome to, I think this is episode 5 of the VS6 BKW antenna build. K1 and KX here. Kilo 1, November, Kilo X-Ray. Yeah, I know. It spells kinks. Um, so far, we've got the ladder line done. The next step, I got to do a feed point connector for the uh, center insulator, whichever way you want to call it, and the end insulators, which may or may not be necessary, but I could not find Dacron line. I'm not sure if I'm in frame here. But I couldn't find Dacron line, so I had to go with poly. Um, <clears throat> I went and bought one of those cheap poly or whatever they are, polyethylene, I don't know, uh, cutting boards and cutting in half and as you can see the crosscut saw that I bought didn't do such a great job oddly enough a regular hacksaw actually gives me a pretty straight cut so I'm finishing 
this is going to be the center insulator which I'm going to cut in a T-shape and uh, I'm not going to bore you with watching me struggle with trying to cut a straight line so I'll be back in just a minute or for you a split second back in a bit alright here we go that on there works 10 millimeter nuts and hex heads works very nicely there can keep that off to the side I can keep that off to the side yep This one in. And again, I only need 14 meters. Oh, that's backwards. 14 meters 30. And I intentionally cut them long. So we got plenty. I cut them for I cut 15 meters of wire here. So we got plenty of uh, wire to use. We'll go in there like that. Okay, now for my ladder line, let's get one end of it. Well, of course, it will be here. We are. And we'll feed the ladder line in. And I also cut this a little long, so we have. I'm not going to do the loop de loop. I'm just going to go in. I don't need that much support on this one. And on that way. And on that way. Because this little hole here is going to have a piece of rope going to this here. What I will do is try to pull that wire even. That'll work. So yeah, we'll have a piece of wire from here to here going through that little hole and that's going to support the ladder line. And then we will put both these wires in one conduct, uh, one connector. There we go. That's going to work. Just around. strip a little bit more of that off. We'll make it work. All right. Let's get a terminal. Yeah. This will teach me to not mess around and before I'm ready. I'm not going to worry about soldering this right now. Can some, be something we can uh, play with later. And around this way. Ugh. So that wire 
captured. That wire is captured. Now we can put that on. Washer and a nut. Now you're not going to go flopping all over the place. Yeah, I'm going to strip a little more off of this. I want to see a little bit more wire on both of these. And I can put a little bit of a twist on it. Get another connector connector or center insulator however you want to do it whatever you want to call it that's what it is okay. oh come on out of there here for the other end of the ladder line to uh, connect to the coax which will also have the RF choke here on the bottom. Okay I'm going to pause briefly and I'll be back soon. Okay so while we're finishing up a little repair on the antenna mast base I went ahead and finished up some work here. I got a loan, I think it's a loan, of some, um, um, yeah, 213, RG213 uh, cable. Uh, this is six turns on about four inches for a RF choke attached to the bottom plate. We're nutted down, or I have, uh, I've double nutted it it's, so the bolt is studded up and then all I could do is just all we need is a one wrench to loosen these things up. Uh, some rope for strain relief. I believe this is actually Dacron line that uh, Lucas had on and again thanks so much to Lucas. Uh, even though we have a um, lockdown in effect right now uh, so he could not come to uh, watch the mast raising which has been <laughs> delayed do a little mishap and miscalculations but anyway uh, so I've got the uh, just went blank yeah coax cable RF choke we're tied in we're on the uh, connector plate and then here we have the ladder line connect to the T and again another uh, piece of rope here for uh, strain relief and another piece of rope to uh, hang this on the uh, line to hoist it up and each leg and let's see if I remember right we were measured out I think these are measured out correct now so um, once we get things up and get the uh, legs pulled out uh, I can put on the um, antenna analyzer which uh, Lucas also loaned to me and again that's Lucas uh, ZS6LH Zulu Sierra 6 
Lima Hotel. Uh, super guy and so happy to uh, have him as a nearby neighbor. So uh, we were able to uh, run down to his place and pick up the cable and the analyzer without getting pinched by the police because here it is a total lockdown. They, there's almost no traffic now out on the highway. Anyway, we'll be back hopefully soon to uh, get this beast up in the air and get it guyed off and then we'll hoist the antenna up and uh, my next job is to go upstairs and uh, set up a point to run this overhead. So that'll be another job. I think I'm going to go take care of that now. Oh, it's the day after. And I just can't stop looking. She's working out good. I did some initial... Um, SWR readings and then I had to do a lot of adjusting and as it turns out the antenna was long so we uh, got that all adjusted so now I'm going to just run you through the uh, the check with the analyzer but uh, one thing that we did think we might have had a problem with was the angle of the legs coming off let's get you back up there that angle there you'll notice I'm quite a bit down probably six feet or so down from the top we lowered the apex so that we could get a wider angle up there sorry for all the wobbling and uh, that helped out a little but mostly we were just long so after several tests and adjustments and shortening we finally got it in resonant and resonance and um, you hold on a second I'm going to set the camera and turn on the uh, in, uh, uh, analyzer and uh, run you through the bands back in a bit okay. And I've already made about five contacts with uh, my friend Lucas, who's just down the road from me, who loaned me his radio. Uh, we're working 40 meters right now on uh, 7.070, which is in the voice uh, part of the band here in South Africa. I know it's uh, data and ready uh, in the States, but uh, we're working it. They're sounding great, even with static crashes all over the place. But let's tune in and make a contact. ZS1 Charlie Hotel, this is Kilo 1, November, Kilo X-Ray, over. Kilo X-ray, Kilo One November, Kilo X-ray, and I've got you an easy five nine here with a little static, but you're sounding quite good. Over. Yeah, I think that the Kilo X-ray is that thing, and then it is that 
Kilo 1 November Kilo X-ray. Kilo 1 November Kilo X-ray. Over. You have it correct, sir. You have it correct. QSL. Over. ZS1 Charlie Hotel, Kilo 1 November, Kilo X-ray, 73's to you. It looks like uh, we got some steady crashes that's trying to shut us down here. So I'm going to let you close out with uh, Lucas, and I'm going to just sit back on the side. Over. Uh, ZS1 Charlie Hotel, Kilo 1 November, Kilo X-ray, 73's. Some serious lightning storms going on, a lot of static, uh, a lot of static crashes. But uh, hey, six contacts so far. We'll probably make a few more before we have to shut down and disconnect the cables. But uh, there we go. QSOs on the brand new ZS6 BKW antenna. It's working like a charm. We're all over South Africa, which is quite a bit of distance to cover. Um, hope you enjoyed. We're going to get this uh, video processed and up to, to YouTube just as soon as possible. This is Kilo 1, November Kilo Retro, Kilo Zen.